maybe it maybe the recording is already going let's see already going okay well very good so hey thank you everybody for joining this is doug brunke i'm the founder and ceo of global chamber and and jem and the team this will be should be where the recording starts not all of that uh, <laughs> earlier stuff um uh, i'm the ceo and also someone who's very interested in member health and not just physical but mental and and one of the things that uh, Susie Zhang has really done a great job with Global Chamber on is helping us understand how to eat healthy how to live healthy because when we're traveling it's tricky it's hard it's very hard often, especially with international travel, to stay in a good mental state and to, and to keep up with our physical activities uh, just because of plane and trains and, and the issues of being in new cities and where to go, um, to not be hit by a car or a train or to have troubles and also crime. You know, the, that's that's a factor. You know, when you're in a city that you're not familiar with, it's not always a great idea to be out on the street. And being from New York myself, I know it can be very dangerous. And so you've got to keep all of those factors in play. Susie is an expert on business. She helps companies uh, land in China and in other countries. She's got a corporate career with Denon and others where she's done it at a professional high level with corporates and now she's doing it with small medium-sized businesses she's been running a very successful food program for companies entering China over uh, for many years COVID put a little bit of a damper on that but she's still the expert that she's always been and she's also an expert on the topic she'll be sharing today and that is how do we keep physically fit uh, while we're doing all of this? So, Susie, thank you for your leadership. You're on the Global Chamber Los Angeles Advisory Board as well. You're also uh, leading our efforts on the, the events committee, along with uh, uh, Tiffany Ablola. And so thank you for all of the things you do for your business with Global Chamber and for today's event as well. Uh, anything anything else that you need from us before I turn this over to you? I appreciate you, Doug, for the introduction. I absolutely feel at home with Global Chamber and the fact that we're about to go global and we're all business oriented. It's really critical for all of us to take care of our own health and uh, mental health, physical health, and not just traveling, but also when we are at home, when we're doing businesses, and we're when we're surrounded by our family members, right? So I already talking about the overall holistic well-being topic, and uh, I talk about different aspects, the importance of doing holistic well-being. So today is the third episode. And I'm going to do a little bit of recap. What are we talking about? But emphasize the importance and what we can take away. I encourage you to think about questions you want to ask me so that I can answer some questions for you. And with that, I'm going to share my screen. And I will focus in. And we're talking about, especially when, for people age 40s and above, and we need to prepare our minds and to really eat right and exercise smart for the ultimate health. And uh, previously, I also talked about we got to make sure financially we're in the right place, uh, both personally and business-wide. So that we can achieve holistic well-being, and I'm have a lot of slides. I'm gonna skip quite a bit, and uh, I just want to show you the key ones that hopefully you can take away um, with you today, and also help you uh, prepare questions you can ask me. So we're talking about the total well-being dimensions. Uh, I'm highlighting three 
pillars, the physical well-being, the emotional, social, uh, mental health, and also the financial wealth. Obviously, there are other aspects of holistic well-being that is important and maybe unique to each one of us. Um, but there's other common ones I like to address. And the reason I'm interested in all of this, to Doug's point, um, during the intro, I've spent uh, more than 25 years in the corporate world, traveling around the world. Definitely understand the challenge we're facing when we're dealing with businesses, when we're dealing with family, try to have a work-life balance, why take care of ourselves? And now I have the luxury of summing all of this together and not just the, based upon what I have learned, um, but also really that what I have worked with others that what people have told me. So I mentioned before that I did not even start workout fitness uh, until my age 53. So I tell you, that is not fun when you try to go to gym at age 53 and try to learn the basics. But truly though, uh, it can be done. That's what I'm trying to be here to share some tips and again, like I said, I hope that you can take away a few things. And now I'm going to skip the slices that I talked about before, and I'm going to focus on putting all this together. So if you forget anything else, this is one page I hope that you can say, hey, can you truly work on your mind and build a health lifestyle and can you do all of this? I'll come back to summarize the key takeaway in the different different points. So in a sense, we're talking about healthy habits here. So this slide is a lot of worth and I'm sure you've done some of this, but again, are, you, are we really drinking enough water? Are we really have enough sleep? Uh, for example, I was just talking to Gemina <laughs> and it's 12 o'clock midnight, her time, right? She doesn't get enough sleep for sure. So, and are we doing the day? Do we are breathing enough? Do we intentionally work on the mind, release our stress? Do we do, do we have a health on the top of the mind? Do we intentionally do a little walk and stand up, you know, do uh, and also do or do a little bit of walk around? So are we eating right? Uh, there are tons of different information out there. Are we having the right food for us, for our body? Again, I'm going to try to show you a little bit of uh, graphics so that you can truly take some this away. Again, my goal is that you can take one or two tips for my, my talk today, I achieved my goal. Um, so how can you get it started, right? So we all want to be better health. We want to be a little bit more fit. And we know our fitness is associated with our health status. How do we improve, right? So the, the graphic on the left side, on your left side, food, you you are what you eat, there is a saying, right? So focus on your food and eat clean, eat what's good for your body. Improve your sleep. Those are the things you heard many times. And make exercise a habit. And I'm, again, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hands on how do you get a simple, very simple exercise. You don't have to go to gym every day. And think about um, simple programs. And then eventually, once it became a habit, you will show results. So when we say habits, it takes more than, what do we say? There are studies showing that for a habit to happen, you're going to have consecutively 28 days or more to make it a routine. So you cannot just do it once, twice, three times, right? 
And then and again, the progress needs to be small, but really make some positive change for you to see. Uh, on the graphic on the right, I want to show you, I thought it was really interesting. Like we all want to six packs, right? Especially younger people, but it does not happen overnight, right? So it's like, oh, gee, for somebody have a six packs, you truly have to work on your work, your food. You truly have to get rid of those uh, super highly refined or processed foods. You got to eat healthy and you got to do regular exercise. Again, I'm putting there just a little bit of graphic to remind you what is important. Now, this is a different way to show, gosh, do we do this, right? Again, I'm not, I'm sure I'm not telling you it anything new here okay so when we will get to this age when we get to uh to uh, what do we know so far with all the social media and all the knowledge out there none of this is new to you however this is a good reminder for you to check to see have i done this have i done that good reminder right so back to building the healthy habits. Uh, I've emphasized on the habits, right? So do we, in the morning routine, do you grab your phone right away? Most of the people do, right? But that is not something you want to keep it going, right? When you get up, do you drink enough water, right? Do you enjoy your breathing to prepare your mind for the day? You do all of that, right? So again, some of this, take some notes. And if you take a one away from this, perfect, right? Um, then when you can come back to other habits, and one of my favorite habits is actually in terms of doing the exercise is actually building some allies with somebody. It's either your friends, your family, or somebody we know through Global Chamber, and they say, hey, uh, have you tried to work out for 30, 30 minutes today? Uh, hey, how is your, you know, holistic well-being approach? Uh, have you done that? Hey, have you done deep breathing and prepare your mind? Have you done some drink enough water? So somebody to remind you so that you don't just count on you and then you can easily go back to the the habits that you built maybe 40 years, right? So again, I always say is that a habit is built, it's not going to have taken away in the day because you spend years, decades to build whatever habits you have. So, so a simple way, another thing, I talked about before in terms of healthy eating. When what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat is all important. So that's a healthy eating. So now I'm diving into a little bit more details, and for the benefit of people who have not heard me when I talked about food alone. So this is basically a summarize of some of the tips you can take with you, and. And there are all kinds of dieting out there, right? I'm sure you have, we all have tried all kinds. And the, the statement that I have made out there is like any one of the dieting method is going to help you reduce weight no matter what. That was my first part of the statement. Any diet, uh, Mediterranean, low carb, no carb, <laughs> whatever diet out there, high, high protein and uh, whatever out there. And it's going to help you reduce weight, but in a short period of time. Then the second part of my statement is that to make this sustainable, though, you got to work on the when, what, and how. You got to make this a habit and the tricky part is that make sure your mind, your brain doesn't think that you're going to be short of a food 
and then trigger your whole body into a hungry state. I say that many times. Do not trigger your brain to think that you're going to be short of food, you're going to be hungry. Because what happens when your brain thinks that you're in a hungry state is your brain, remember your brain is the boss, it's going to trick the whole system, be ready to store any food you take into a storage fat. You, yes, you heard that right. They're going to turn any food into storage fat if you're in a hungry mode. So make sure whatever you eat is make sure you really supplement. You have the habits of eating right, drinking, so that your brain doesn't think you're hungry, okay? Don't get yourself in a hungry stage. So that means eating bulky, higher fiber foods, and just fulfilling. You make sure you got to be fulfilling. I used to have a saying, your brain needs to be happy with whatever you eat. It cannot be starving. Yeah, because when your brain is in starving mode, it's going to turn your whole body, digest the system into a storage, fat storage mode. You do not want that. So again, any question, think about it. We can come back to this later. And every, all, all this healthy habits is going to be something to do with food. What do we eat? And to be physically healthy is going to have to do with something. What do we eat? How we do it? And again, there are they're different theories said, people said, don't skip breakfast. There are different theories say, yeah, you're going to do 18, eight type of uh, eight hours eat and 16 hours don't eat type of method. And it's really confusing, I know, right? So people sometimes say, hey, you're going to do one meal a day. Frankly, everybody has different body type and some, some method may work for you better, some another. But one thing for sure, Make sure, I go back to what I said before, make sure you are not in the starving mode. If you keep starving your body, if you keep starving, and what are your brain's going to think? It's going to think that you're short of food. When your brain think you're short of food, your whole digestive system is going to turn it into preservation mode. When we preserve uh preserve energy, our body tends to preserve energy into body fat storage mode. So for most of people, don't skip breakfast is a good thing to do. Again, counting calories may not work for everybody either. So again, don't just count for calorie. And for most of people, don't skip breakfast, but do the right breakfast meaning you got to have a high protein. You cannot have a high high carbohydrate. I was showing like this are the, the, the typical stuff I eat like morning, right? I eat lots of healthy fats. I eat a lot of proteins and uh, I don't shy away from healthy carbs like uh, sweet potatoes, fantastic carbohydrates source, right? It's, carbohydrates is really important for our brain. I mentioned that before. Um, so fitness, I'm going to skip, uh, uh, fast forward to the second pillar is about fitness. Now, specifically, um, I talking about, uh, the, all you need to remember is that the, the principle of losing fat, if you want to lose in body fat, you're going to make sure you know that the body fat losing a certain sequence because we build fat from blood first then waistline, the belly, then butt, then the arms and legs. But we, when we start losing the body fat, it's the reverse. Our, we will lose our belly fat the last. So again, don't expect things happen quickly and overnight. And when we lose, it doesn't also mean that you, if you want to work on uh, lose belly fat, you just work on belly exercise. No, it doesn't work that way either. So 
So we're talking about losing body fat, but the most important thing when we say losing fat is not necessary for you look good or to be skinny. It's actually thinking about inner body fat, especially the body fat around your organs. They're not good for your health. So if you want to get rid of any body fat, think about the body fat around the inner organs. It's the inner body fats. So let's get rid of those. And the simple exercise, I, I used to play this. I love to play this. Is This is kind of interesting. Okay, so if you think about your waistline and there's simple exercise, you do not need equipment. So you can do a little bit of this and really simple way. And around arms, legs, you can do a simple exercise too. Again, a simple squat, a simple stand up, uh, or you can lie down and then do exercise to work on your body as, as, as well. Now, if you want to have a stronger back, uh, especially when we are in front of a computer for too long and we want to make sure our neck muscle is a strong and we want to work on the arms so that it's not, there's no fat tinking, too much, not too much fat tinking around our arms. There's simple exercise you can do. All right. So again, you don't need equipment and uh, you can just grab one bottle of water, do this, right? <laughs> or grab a backpack, whatever you can find. Simple, but the, when it comes down to exercise, I want to make sure though, you got to warm up before you do any of this. Otherwise you will hurt yourself, right? You don't want that. You want to warm up your muscle before you do anything. And when you're doing your exercise, you need you can start to alter different parts of focus in the area to working on. And if all possible, try to get to total workout time close to 30 minutes. So five minutes may not get the results is you you're looking for exactly right away. Uh, of course, you can say five minutes is better than nothing, right? Once you build that habit. Um, but if you have some time and study showing that 30 minutes is where you start to burn your inner fat, if that's your goal, right? Remember we say for health reason, we want to get rid of inner fat around our waistline, around our, our um, uh, organs. All right. So again, that's the, that's something again, Finally, when you exercise, uh, let's say if you do 30 minutes, make sure you stretch. Make sure you really stretch your muscle, relax them before you sit down and look at your computer again or a phone again. So let's say, how do we do all of this even when you travel? I know it's a challenge. So it's very challenging when you travel to do all of this. But if I replay some of this work, <laughs> is that possible you do some of the work uh, in your hotel room? You can argue yes. So again, it's all possible. Can you do some of this even on the airplane? Yes, it's probably possible, right? But the key though, my I can speak from my experience, to, is to even have the mental strength to do any of this, right? Or even have the reminder to do any of this. That's what's the key. So again, if you're on the airplane sitting down, which I'm going to get on the airplane in a couple of days, right? So I'm going to have to remind myself, stand up and move my arms and move my legs and do a little squat. It's possible. So I talked about how to get the money work, the financial piece. So I'm going to, uh, not my not our focus today, so I'm going to skip that. Um, basically, that's the summarize what I talking about. So the key takeaway, build healthy habits. It takes 
efforts, takes efforts to focus on your healthy eating and takes efforts on your manage your stress level at home or you're doing travel and take efforts of get your body moving to reduce inner fat and it takes effort to think about holistically how to deep breathing and the relaxing and getting all of this together. Again, work on your brain, work on your mind. And your brain means that don't make your brain think that you're starving, right? And let the brain relax, let your mind relax. Therefore, your body relax. So when you all of this going together, the mind, the body, your physical health will increase over time. And have the habit of establishing allies or friendship or somebody remind you of doing this before you have these habits is crucial. Have different ways to remind you, like have put on your calendar, remind yourself to drink your water, remind yourself to breathe deeply, remind yourself to stand up, walk around for five minutes, remind yourself to do a structured 30 minutes workout. It will all add up. It will help you increase, enhance your physical health over time. So all together, if you forget anything else, think about your health is critically important. Think about you want to achieve the holistic well-being, the different dimension. You're going to make all this, this together. So enjoy your journey to holistic well-being. So I'm going to stop sharing and... Uh, And uh, let you ask any questions you may have. All right. And I'm going to pause. Thank you, Susie. Uh, really Thank you. Great I appreciate that. Uh, do you, uh, did, um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I have I have a question. Okay. So for those of you uh, in the audience, uh, just unmute and ask the question um, or, or in the, I mean, you can do it in the chat area as well, if you'd like, and uh, we'll take a look at it there or raise your hand. Um, my question relates to timing. Um, this is something I've always wrestled with because to your point, you mentioned about having probably skipping breakfast is a bad idea. I'm an early riser. Um, so let's say I get up at 4 a.m. Usually it's earlier, but let's say 4 a.m. Um, I'd like to uh, wait for breakfast, but I also like to do exercise around six. And so it's always in my head, like, should I have breakfast before that? But then do I save enough time before I exercise at six? And will I wake up my wife if I cook early, which I would, you know, she gets up around eight or 830. So it's, it's, I just logistically, it doesn't really work traveling or otherwise. And so I'm wondering how, how would we think about breakfast, getting nourishment before exercise and how would you consider timing all of that in, in the morning? Great question, Doug. And uh, the name breakfast, meaning break your fasting, right? So it, the timing though, it differs from people to people. Like your early riser, you get up four o'clock and uh, then people get up 11 o'clock in the morning, right? So um, now the, my belief when I look at different research, when I also test different methodology and it's truly you gotta listen to your body. So are you hungry, right? So once you get up, four o'clock, do you feel like you want to eat? Uh, or after, of course, the first thing you do is drink a lot of water. 
that that is a great habit to have, right? So you got to drink a lot of water and then you say, hey, I'm hungry. I'm purposely not eating, right? So um, four o'clock eating a full breakfast, it's not going to be too realistic uh -huh. for people. So in your case, if you don't feel like so, if you're not hungry at four o'clock, you can start in a way until six or seven to your point when everybody gets up. And then uh, that also brings up to another question. Do you eat before you exercise, right? That again, it's also depend on the person. Some people, they're better uh, eat some food before they exercise. Some people are pref prefer an empty stomach before they work out, right? Or when they work out. Um, the rule of thumb though, you don't want to work out with a full stomach you don't want to work out with, uh, with dizziness, right? So it's somewhat uh, the the general guidance, like you eat something, uh, eat special high protein amount, uh, some carbohydrates, then you work out. And after you work out, you, you eat more protein, but also you have some healthy carbohydrates to help you body, uh, help your muscle grow and recover. Uh -huh. Hey everyone. Hi, my name is Nicole Olsup from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, may I add to that as well, Doug? And uh, I forgot your name. Please forgive me. I'm not seeing it here. So <laughs> it's so Susie. Doug, Susie's Doug. Yes, Susie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Doug, as Susie said, it all depends on listening to your body, right? Uh -huh. However. And she mentioned a great point about breaking the fast. However, you need to provide your body with the energy and it depends on your goals. So if you want to build lean body mass and you don't want to lose any weight, then it is advisable if you can consume something. Now, I'm using the word consume rather than eating something because your consumption can either be in liquid form or solid. Right. And you, you need to be balanced. So you can go as simple as drinking, let's say, a glass of milk. Right. Where you will get your carbohydrates, your fat and your proteins in that. Or sometimes if you want to even just grab something simple, you can have like a handful of almonds or walnuts or something like that to give your body a little boost of energy. And if you want to lose weight because of how the body burns the fat, you don't want to consume, let's say, high carbohydrates and you end up, you know, eliminating the process and burning, let's say, the, the carbohydrates instead of the fat. So you kind of want to starve yourself out of, from burning the glucose, but you want to burn the fat. So in doing that, you can start with, yes, the teas and some form of protein as well. So you can now uh, go through a process where the body is burning what you want it to actually burn. And then after your, your meal, sorry, after your exercise, you must consume something within, and in, preferably in liquid form, within 30 minutes to get it. There's a body, the muscles are hungry. <laughs> as I would say. So you now have to consume something balanced. So you get your carbohydrates and your protein in there to help build and repair the muscles. So it is advisable to answer directly your question. As I said, you should consume something before, but listen to how your body is. And it also depends on how late you may have eaten the time before. Uh, I usually suggest because we, if we're following a proper routine of sleeping, going to bed at a reasonable time, usually the body is fasting during the night time. So, but sometimes persons may eat late. So it depends on when your last meal may have been. Okay, sorry, uh, my yeah. rate came on. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Probably somebody else wants to talk. So <laughs> I was just sharing that with you. Okay. So that's that's very helpful. And so I'd like to go back to Susie and um, 
Can you can you hear me, Susie? Yes, Doug. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I, I went out and I came back in my car. Um, could you respond to that and give your additional thoughts? And one other thing I failed to mention is in my particular case, the times that I felt the healthiest in the last couple of years is when I was eating on a diet where I was eating twice a day, where I was doing that, you know, 12 hour apart thing where uh, I would have breakfast around eight. Uh, well, it, actually, it ended up being like eight or nine for breakfast and then like five or so at night. So there was this longer period of time at night and a shorter amount of time between meals during the day. And that was a, that felt really good. I lost weight. It was just if, if everything was working. But then here's this exercise coming in at, you know, 6 a.m., and then similar, it reminded me of like when you're traveling, you've got different patterns and things like that. And so could you comment um, on what Nicole mentioned? And then when we get into these patterns of where we're eating over periods of time and then we travel, that creates havoc or feels like it creates havoc with not only mentally trying to keep up with that, but then I'm sure your body is saying, oh my God, what are you doing to me? You know, you used to be doing these patterns and now everything is screwed up. And doesn't that also kind of mess everything up in terms of health and diet or, or not? How do, how do we maintain that? Yes, it's a absolute question. Great question. And then Nicole, good uh, adds on as well. So you probably get a sense that uh, when to eat and how to eat and what to eat is complex, right? Very complex. Um, there's no one answer to all the, to this question because everybody's different. So I, I want to concur what uh, Nicole said is the right what works for you, Nicole, keep that way, right? So, um, but in general, though, your first meal, meaning breakfast, doesn't matter what time you eat it, right? Some people take it at 1 p.m. Sometimes some people take it at 6 a.m., right? So that breakfast, make sure what to eat is not the high carbohydrate, high sugar type of meal, um, that meal or consumption, or Nicole, you you call that, or maybe in your case is a drink. In other people's case, is a full meal, right? So make sure it's a high protein, and uh, if and the carbohydrates is complex carbohydrates has high fiber, so slower digestion and to prepare your brain, uh, prepare your uh, your brain to your whole body for the the whole day, right? So so that is point one. Point two is in terms of um, uh, you, you, Doc, you mentioned that you, you exercise at six o'clock and you used to eat at eight. Now six, you feel like you need to eat something, right? So that break the whole pattern. Again, in your case, because it worked for you, you said eight hours eating and 11, uh, 12 hours, not, uh, 16 hours not eating. And in your case, your body type may respond to this type of format really well, meaning a longer period of time that is fasting. So your body is not taking consumer food or or major um, major food components. And that's the case. You may want to try shift your 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 uh, eight hours eating period. So let's say you starting eat at six o'clock if that works for you because of your exercise, then you can have your last meal a little earlier instead of very late. I know it's going to be really challenging because a lot of us to uh, actually eat dinner with the whole family. The dinner time usually is six. So that that can be a challenge for you. So you may want to have to just another way to do it is like, hey, maybe you can just do your exercise time so that your, you do light exercise in the morning six, for example, but you do more of a heavy exercise in the evening time before your dinner time. That might work. And you, you can try a different way to see how your body respond. The bottom line is that make sure whatever you try, do not stress your body out and don't make create, meaning don't create extra stress 
Otherwise, your body will turn into different mode, meaning they will actually store fat in, uh, but into body fat instead of uh, nurture your whole body. So um, the, uh, the last point I want to mention is that uh, there, there, there are certain people on a certain diet, for example, they just like completely get rid of a carbohydrate, for example. And that is not something I recommend in the long term at all, because our brain needs good carbohydrates to for our brain health, for our brain to grow. And also for a continued muscle growing, you need a uh, complex carbohydrates to help you build a muscle back as well, in addition to high quality protein. Uh, so there's certain research methods showing that people cycling their carbohydrate intake. That may work for somebody who wants to lose weight or, or lose body fats, and or people who have tried different ways can hit, uh, actually hit plateau. When you hit plateau, you may want to try a, a carbohydrate cycling to see if, if that help you break that plateau. Amazing. Great, great feedback. And I'm wondering, um, it reminds me because Nicole is, oh my God, she's so knowledgeable. And I knew, Nicole, that you have a health background and it involved. Could you each talk a little bit about your backgrounds, Nicole? Like just briefly, you know, like give us a, an explanation of how you became so knowledgeable and, and Susie to also, to some extent, it would, might be helpful for folks to understand more about your background as well. How did you become such an expert? You kind of bridged it by talking about not being very interested in this and then becoming interested, you know, later than you should have, but how, what, what are some of the things that got you so knowledgeable? Um, if, you. If, if you guys are open to sharing. Okay, Nicole, when you're ready, you, you, I'll let you speak, but I'll just very briefly about my background. Um, I went to grad school for food science and nutrition. So eating healthy, eating right is my, my uh, what I studied for in graduate school. And also I spent 25 years or more in the food industry. Uh, a lot of those time, um, I led a program uh, at Kraft Foods, for example, for weight management. So I had a first hand of, uh, uh, of access to research data and uh, all kinds of people at a at different age and different uh, weight management challenges. I, I worked on that for several years. And then uh, most recently, because of my personal interest that I started in, became interested in the fitness and the eating nutrition all together. So I get additional certification for uh, nutrition and uh, personal training and the exercising. Thank you, Suzy. Um, similar to you, I have over 20 years in the industry. I am a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and exercise professional. So I have, um, throughout the life cycle, worked with persons in losing weight, gaining weight, and actually training persons as well. So yes, I have that background of doing it because I practice also what I preach and I'm also doing my PhD in naturopathic medicine where nutrition and exercise is also a great part of it. <laughs> so that's why I was able to contribute and add to what you were saying as well. So thank you. Excellent. Appreciate it, Nicole. I know we're in a very important but very complex subject. I'm, I'm sure you agree and definitely uh, how right how to exercise right it's really critical there are many different kinds of theories out there uh it's there for a reason because our body is different um but uh what do we what i try to do today and in the past uh, few sections is to share the common knowledge uh work, work for most of people but i hope your takeaway today is to try a few things that to see if how your body 
uh, takes them, right? So the the healthy habits, the tips, and uh, exercise, and how to eat right, and and you need to find your method. You find your habits, but then we all gonna hit a plateau. Doesn't matter as you eat a uh, weight management or your exercise. Then you need to find a way to break that plateau. And I mentioned about a carb a cycling, for example, or exercise. There are different ways to exercise uh, to break the plateau. I, um, my 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 class of people work out with me. I actually work out with them at the same time, so I know how to break that plateau. But if you do that yourself, you gotta take the journey. You gotta see what works last time and how it works this time. Any other questions you may have? Uh, we only have a few minutes left. I saw that in the uh, questions area that Johans said they have a similar questions. I uh, hope that answer your questions. Um, Doug, I hope that uh, we give you enough information, Doug, to to try different ways. Yeah, no, that's that's very helpful, and and to echo what you said about having you know some sort of a system with other people. The best period of time I ever had was in Tokyo, where I had. We would meet two or three times a week at to uh, in our apartment, and we would both ride our bikes to the Tokyo American Club, and we'd each do different exercises. But the fact that we would, I was forced <laughs> to meet him, you know, at six twenty in the morning. You know, the the commitment that we had made together to both be there, and then you know to to just whatever do it do whatever after that. That commitment meant that we were locked in, you know, you couldn't have any excuses. Right. Uh, and if you had an excuse, you had to have a good, pretty good reason <laughs> to do it. And so I don't know how to, to recreate that all the time, especially when you're traveling, it's really tough, right? Cause usually you're traveling by yourself. It makes, it's another reason why traveling makes, makes this all much harder. Absolutely. So I, I, I learned a few tips. I also share with my class as well, my 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 friends too. So I told my class, "You are my accountability partner." I use Nicole's words, uh, so that what when there are days, there's no one time I'm the one in you share the exercise. This is just to tell you all these years I've been I've been uh, doing this exercise program. There's not one time that I say, oh, gee, I'm going to do exercise. No, it's all my class members, every friends. There was a, do we have a class today? I said, okay, gee, I cannot cancel today. Uh, but I didn't make a rule like uh, if there's one person, even one person said they're going to do a uh, workout, then I cannot cancel, right? So so you're absolutely right. You got to have somebody to keep nagging you and say, hey, are we on, right? So, uh, Doug, I, I like to be that kind of partner for you, but knowing my history, I never reach out to other people to nag them. So, but you can, nag, you can say me, Susie, right? Can we do some workout? I will be there for you for sure. Um, <laughs> then my other tips is like... Um, old days like when I had to be the one like do going to gym myself this is like several years ago before I um my classes and uh I learned one tips like in the morning I start to wear my workout clothes uh if I not the whole thing but at least to put a bra uh, a workout bra on or something so that I will not uh I will not be like uh have to take it off is harder right or put my gym back somewhere. Uh, so anyway, anything you can do. And one more thing back to not just workout, but drinking water, right? After my daughter convinced me to switch to this 48 ounce, I drink a lot more water, right? So again, those small things can help you build habits. And uh, and also what tried 
oh, back to eating, I always say like, don't try not to eat out too often. Every time I, now I eat out, I know as a food per, a professional, you eat out is always a challenge because no, never a food that's good tasting and healthy enough for me, right? Um, but I, for social e events, you have to eat it out. That's okay. Enjoy those. So one of the tips I have when it comes to food is that food serve different purposes, right? Not just to make your body healthy. So you it can also be a social element. So when those are the times, enjoy it, right? So um, enjoy the traditional food when you celebrate it on the holiday for the occasion. So don't feel guilty about that, right? Or if somebody's birthday, eat a piece of cake, so what? So give your body permission to eat, to enjoy the food uh, occasionally, right? So you you have my permission. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. You have my permission. Um, give yourself permission. So otherwise, you you constantly battle this healthy food you have to eat, right? Unfortunately, uh, food industry has not created a food that is super tasty and super healthy at the same time. So that's the second, another piece I want to mention about eating. So enjoy your piece of chocolate sometimes uh, or enjoy the ice cream. Uh, again, you only do that a couple of years, a couple of times a year. Why not? Uh, so that is about that. And then I saw a question in the chat box. You want to know, we want to talk a little bit more about uh, financial, um, personal well-being. Um, that piece... I talk a little bit more, but I can share with you one screenshot. And because of time concern, I'm not going to be able to do much. I'll be happy to talk more um, in the future talk. How's that? So there's one takeaway about financial, personal wellness personal financial wellness and business financial wellness. I had a one slide out here. So when you think about your financial, I think the key thing is to know how money works and think about how money you need um, if you don't have them. And we constantly, we never know how much, how much money is good enough money, right? And you got to have the knowledge about uh, do we have enough uh, for emergency use for physical needs? Uh, do we have enough for uh, for deal with um, inflation, deal with uh, retirement in the future? And so that you can take your fear away, you can take the myth away. So that is something I really think important to know how money works. And if you have a chance, there's a a, a website called a financial pocket knife or there's a book about it sorry i don't know the uh the author <laughs> the name of the author but i like the their graphic here so it give you the basic knowledge about how money works so go ahead and read it when you have a chance so that you can have more knowledge and i love this analogy about pocket knives right so you have different financial tools to protect yourself protect your family, but you have, you have enough savings to deal with uh, whatever future. But the key though, is to think about money and to take the tax advantage. Because time concern, I'm not gonna be able to uh, talk too much here. And uh, I'm gonna just leave it there, basically saying that, uh, so glad you are here, that's, we get to share our knowledge, share our learnings about different aspects of holistic well being. And I personally can rest that if we don't take care of those key components of well being, we're not going to truly feel happy, truly feel that we are all in the good shape, meaning our physical health, our mental health, our social connections, and our personal and business fantasies. Once we head to that whole all together, all put together, then that's when we can breathe easy and we feel like 
uh, we're in a good shape. So I want to wish you all have the holistic, achieve your holistic well-being uh, by working on different components. I know you're going to get there. And uh, through Global Chamber, such a great platform, let's all remind each other, be a accountability partner for each other and all these aspects. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Be global and unstoppable, everybody. Thanks for all your uh, information. Very helpful. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Susie. Thank you. We'll be Thank in touch. You. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.